Jumping is just about the most important thing you can do across the Little Big Planet series, and in most games actually. But I've always wanted to know what the minimum number of jumps would be to complete the game. The only question being, which one? My first thought is of course, well, LBP1, but there's like zero ways to gain height without jumping in that. So instead, I'm going to do LBP2 because of all of its amazing power-ups that give us more movement options. Now what counts as a jump? I'm going to say that anything that the game itself refers to as a jump is counted, which includes jumping, controlinator jumps, and drop downs. Yes, drop downs. I really didn't think these would ever be counted to the point where I finished the entire route while ignoring them, but when I checked, they're actually referred to as jump downs, meaning we have to count them. All right, let's see how far we can get. Yeah, so not very far. We get stopped as soon as we get taught about jumping. But that's why we're looking for the total number of jumps, and not whether we can completely avoid them. Nicely enough though, the rest of the level is pretty smooth except for these stairs. Typically you jump twice here, but if you time it you can land on the last step to keep walking through, leaving us with two jumps for introduction. And I'm just going to put this costume on real quick so we can start the first actual level, Rookie Test, and then also fix the puppet colour. Throughout the first world there's a lot of these books that get in the way, and without a lot of ways to get around them. So we'll jump twice to get over these two. Da Vinci's elevator part is flat until the second level, where we need another jump. Then on the third level, we use two. The fourth level is the most interesting because of its stairs. Normally we would use three jumps to get up there, but we can actually bring it down to two by spawning another player and then using them to get a super high jump after doing another jump before that. Hooray! The next level has a jump up here, and then our very first drop down, or a jump down as Da Vinci refers to it at this moment, so we'll sure be counting it. That is, if we couldn't skip it. The game actually changes layer for us if we just run into the wall, so yeah, we can just keep going. After this, we can finally hold to retry and escape the elevator, where we meet up with the bounce pads, our very first way of gaining height without jumping, letting us effortlessly glide through the air to complete this section perfectly. The next part also uses bounce pads, but there's a tiny ledge afterwards that we can't just run up. I even tried slapping myself up there, but even though it looks like it, slapping doesn't actually give your player any height. If it does, it's like barely any. The only thing that it really gives you is speed, but that isn't useful here. A way more promising method is to hit the bounce pad as it reveals itself, but it's just barely not enough, so we're just gonna have to jump over it. And now we get more stairs to climb, except we can't use two players to skip one of the three jumps because they're too deep. Thankfully though, Right after this is the scoreboard, and we can finish with a total of 12 jumps. Grab and swing starts strong with another set of 3 books, and then 2 more to jump over, after we balance on this sponge to not fall down. For the next gap we can land on the car, and then very slowly move it over to jump over to the books. The next part requires another special jump. Normally we would use 3 to make it to the next book, but we can get away with only 2 by doing what's called a left corner jump, to boost ourselves straight up. This next car is pretty much the same as the last, where we use one jump to get off it. Then we don't ride down with Da Vinci, and jump another three times to clear the stairs. It looks like we'd probably need to jump to grab this sponge, but since it's still a tutorial, we can fall into this pit, and then use these generous bounce pads to skip it, and then do the exact same thing for the next gap, where we enter the level link with a total of 12 jumps so far. The toilet has pretty steep walls, but they are low enough for us to slide up them to get out, leading to another new way of gaining height, the grappling hook which I'm sure will be very useful, right after we jump another three times to clear more stairs. Why are there so many of these books? It's okay. After this, the level becomes really easy actually, because by using the grappling hook, we can now clear just about any obstacle without jumping, finishing the level with 15 total jumps. And oh boy, does the grappling hook abuse continue, because in Grapple Grapple, the entire level is based around clearing obstacles with this power-up. So there really isn't much to say about it, Literally any gap or wall we have to get around just isn't a problem now. There's even some bounce pads to help along the way. The second half of the level isn't any different either. We can swing ourselves to gain speed all the way until the end. Well, actually, just before the end. The final lever is like, just barely out of reach for the grappling hook. Or at least I thought it was until I stood in the perfect spot to get it. Making for the first level with zero jumps. Alright, time for bravery test. Like any other challenge, the best thing to probably do is to just jump over this wall and finish the level instantly, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of. And in this case, it takes two whole jumps to finish the level like this. 
So we should at least look at the normal route to see if we can beat that and no, no, there are just too many jumps in this level. We're just going to do the skip, which makes two jumps for bravery test. Who would have thought? Okay, now it's time for another interesting level, final test, which is a boss fight. Initially, the levers that we need to pull to defeat the boss are just out of reach. So we use two jumps to get those on each side, and then there's another jump to reach this button where the levers get pushed back upwards. Actually, you, you know what, I'm just going to restart. We can plan this way better. Now to do this properly, we're going to use another two players which will each pull one of the levers at the beginning. And they're just going to keep holding onto them. So we're still at two jumps for each lever. Then if we just stand in the right spot, we can change the layer onto the button's platform as it's rising behind us. Now when the levers get pushed back up, we get to skip another two jumps since our other players are still grabbing them, where they pull them down again by pretty much doing nothing. After this we just press the button again, they pull down the levers, they pull down the levers again, giving us the grappling hook after death abusing to take the final hit on the boss, completing the level with only two jumps. The start of the next world gives us what is probably the most useful power up across the rest of the challenge, the Grabinators, which lets us pick up and throw players regardless of our surroundings. So after we move this box, we can easily just spawn another player to clear the next two gaps. This staircase is pretty tall, so we're going to need a bit of help. So we'll get two more players over here by grabbing them just before they fall down, then make a tower to throw our main player just high enough to reach the checkpoint. Once we respawn, we can keep using our three players to clear the next set of obstacles by throwing each other. Then to skip another throw, we can just fall down and left here. There's a few ways to press this button, but the one at the jam is too high to reach without jumping. So what we'll do is, we'll throw another player onto the ledge, then just throw them a jam to hit it with. The next button can be hit by throwing the block, then we have to use three players, actually no, four players, to get past the next part. But it isn't an issue. Sadly there's a drop down that we can't avoid here, but after the bounce pads we can get away with only using one extra player to get past this section by using the enemies. Then the next set of monsters are pretty similar too. The roof is too low in this jam section, but we can just throw our extra player to hit the button where we then finish the boss fight easily because of the bounce pad, finishing the level with only one jump, if you want to call it that because it was a drop down. Brainy Cakes also uses the Grabinators, but there's also a ton of bounce pads, so we probably won't need a lot of extra players. We can make it pretty far just by using the cake as normal, just making sure we bounce off these enemies properly. But right afterwards there's another drop down to do. We actually need another player for this next part, so to save another jump, we can hold our second player while dropping down so that we don't need to do it twice. Then, we can just run onto this platform and throw them all the way over. From here the level goes back to being played mostly as intended, until getting to the spoons, where we just have to use a second player to give us a boost up. There is a bounce pad for the next set, but we need to be thrown again at the top anyway. We probably could do this next part as intended after being thrown high enough, but it's way easier just to fall at the right time and fly in between the gas. Finally, after one more Grabinator throw, we can finish the level as normal and end with only one jump, which again was a drop down. And here's another brand new power up, although this one isn't nearly as useful as the last two. It's the Creatinator, which in this level lets us fire these cakes around, which won't be completely useless. For the first major obstacle, I was originally using a second player to boost us up after doing a single jump, but we can actually avoid this by just placing our cake in the right spot on the platform and simply walking up. There's a tiny ledge at the end of this drawer, so we actually need to block it so that we can use the bounce pads. Then for this fire pit, we'll do something similar to before where we use a single jump combined with another player's cake to make it. And I did try but there's pretty much no way to get around this next gap by using just the cakes. It would be cool to make a bridge out of them, but we'll just have to use a jump here. After this vertical conveyor there's another fire pit that we'll want two people for again, but to get them both down there, they would normally need to do a drop down each. Using the Cakeinator though, we have one of our players drop down, so they can place a cake that the second player uses to do a regular layer change on, getting them both down there to clear the fire in one jump. Thankfully this next gap is just the right size to create a cake bridge to get across, but then we reach this raised bounce pad which we need to use a jump to get on top of. After placing a cake on the roof here to get past, these next two walls can actually both be scaled by using a single jump in the right way, where we then have a decent moment of just running. Once we get to the end of this conveyor, it looks like we could actually make it without jumping because the range to activate the checkpoint is so big. But I haven't been able to do it, even while standing on a cake to get closer, so we'll just have to use a jump to reach it for now. Alright, 
This next section truly shows the power of the Creatinator, because despite how big this gap is, it's actually possible to position two cakes perfectly to create a bridge that's just big enough for us to get across, where we then do the same thing for the next one, and this platform's even raised on the other side. That's where the fun stops though, since we need to use one last jump to make it onto the scales, getting us to the scoreboard with nine jumps. Current Affairs has absolutely no power-ups for us to use, aside from bounce pads, so we might not be able to get away with much. Straight away, there's a tiny little jump to get up here, where thankfully we can then swing off the sponge to avoid the next one. But then there's another one like before after this, so we're on two jumps so far. Then we have a drop down, two jumps, and then another two jumps, followed by another drop down. The pain does stop briefly here, since we can just use bounce pads and these raising platforms to get through a decent amount, until another jump and swing. Okay, this is probably the first interesting section for this level, where instead of zigzagging and doing two jumps to reach the top level, we can time a single jump as the enemy flips to get part way up, to then finish it off with the bounce pads. After another drop down, we can walk onto these rising platforms, and then keep on walking until this platform, where we use one jump to get onto it, and then simply walk off at the right time to get past the next gap. There isn't any way to get onto here since it isn't grabbable, so we'll use another jump. But after this we can keep using the moving platforms, and then the enemies to get the rest of the way to the end, pulling the plug, and finishing with only 13 jumps which isn't the worst so far. The last level of this world has a great start, with needing to do a drop down and then a jump right as we spawn. It's another case of the platform looking low enough for a slap to get us up there, but again this does like literally nothing. There are Gravenators in this level though, so we'll actually keep our second player around. Annoyingly, the elevator that we're in is just barely raised enough where we have to use drop downs to get out of it. Because of this, combined with the electricity being in the way, the best way to do this phase is just to use a single drop down to get both players out of the elevator, throw one of them at the boss to get two of its brains, then after death abusing to get back in, do the same thing to get the last brain of this phase, adding another two jumps for this section. Because the next two phases don't have electricity going across the ground, we're able to dodge the attacks without jumping, meaning we don't have to keep doing drop downs to get out of the elevator. In fact, we can actually skip those drop downs altogether, by just doing a normal layer change as we go past the floor to get out that way. From here we can finish this phase as normal, by just dodging attacks and throwing cakes at the brain. We can do another normal layer change to get out like before. Then by just using the bounce pad at the right time, we can hold onto the side of the wall while the boss's brains are revealed, to get all of them in one go, completing the level in 4 jumps. Maximum security is another 2 part level, but the first part is pretty short. Oh cool, 1000 score bubbles. It also gives us a grappling hook, and there's heaps of bounce pads, so we can get through the first part pretty easily. As soon as the next part starts though, we need to use a jump to reach these bounce pads since we don't have a power up anymore. We then get the grabinators right after this, which as always, will be very useful. Now before we pull this lever, there's a skip here that takes us to the end of the level, which will cost us another 3 jumps to do. By getting 3 players on the upper ledge, we can place 2 of them on the bounce pad while holding each other which launches the top player onto a ledge out of bounds, by jumping from the other player's hands. After this they fall out of bounds, and take a narrow route to the scoreboard, by dropping down at the right time, then jumping from this platform, finishing the level and adding 3 more to the total. So, unless the intended path is worse than that, we'll come back and do it. Now, after pulling the lever from where we got out of bounds, we have our first jump for this route to get down here. Then we just throw our player over the electricity. For the next big gap, we throw across two players so that they can reach the lever together, letting us continue. After dodging all of the enemies, there's another unavoidable drop down, putting us now at an additional two. It looks like we would need to do another drop down here, but if we're carrying our other player, they can actually just reach the sponge that pushes us forward. A similar thing happens with this sponge later, where we grab it from the other layer without actually moving. Sadly after this however, is the third jump down for this route, making the intended path no better than the skip. But, this is actually all there is, since we go straight to the scoreboard after this. So doing and not doing the skip, amazingly both gave us the same result, completing the entire level in 4 jumps. The beginning of the next level does have Grabinators, but unfortunately we won't be able to access them, since it requires a sticker switch that we don't have at this point in the story. There are a lot of bounce pads though, so it won't be completely horrible. To climb up this part, we can walk off the edges above the bounce pads to hit them, which actually lets us grab this sponge without jumping. Once we fall though, we need to do a drop down to keep going. 
The part later on with these moving platforms would require a jump to get past, but if we go back to where we just were, for some reason there just isn't collision on this part of the wall, letting us change layer and skip that section entirely. But then a bit after this is another drop down. And now, we have another set of stairs, which we haven't seen for a while. Like in Rookie Test, the best way I've found to get around this is to spawn another player and use two jumps to reach the third step, then just jump the rest of the way and drop down afterwards, adding only five more jumps to the total instead of six if we did it normally. The lever at this bounce pad section is just barely out of reach. Sometimes you can pull it if you get lucky, but I think you actually need to bounce on it a few times first so that the bounce pad moves around a bit, since it isn't glued. After another decent bounce pad section, we finish the level off with another two unavoidable drop downs. Well, they would be avoidable if we had the Grabinators, but we don't, finishing the level in 10 whole jumps. Bank for Buck is another Grabinator level, so we can get pretty far without jumping, up until the point we lose them actually. This power up remover is the only thing stopping us from getting them through, so once we get three players up here, we'll just throw two of them over it to grab one of the bombs each. At the end of the bomb ride, we have one of our players thrown through this gap to avoid the drop down, and then we have our other player die, so we still have one pair of Grabinators. The first flamethrower section is easy, but the second one has a few tricks in it. First we throw one of our players over these blocks so we can aim the fire to destroy them, letting the other player come through. Then we get rid of the tower and throw the player over the blocks again to have them destroyed so that we can push the metal over with another throw, to then do just one more to reach the level link, starting part 2 without any jumps. We now no longer have the Grabinators, so we'll have to be on our own for a bit, and straight up we need to jump and pull this lever to open this wall, and then do another one to clear this gap, but we can pull the next level with the bounce pads. We can get onto the spinning platform pretty easily, but it doesn't seem possible to reach the bounce pads from here, despite how close it looks. So we'll use another jump. The next box is grabbed using the bounce pads again, but the one after needs to be jumped at. Here comes another situation, where it looks like getting a slap from a player could give us a big enough boost to get to the bounce pads, but sadly it's just barely not possible it seems, despite how cool this would be if it worked. So we'll just take the jump, and then grab this bomb with the bounce pads. We get the Grabinators back now, so we can keep going for a little while without jumping. But it's not very far. There isn't any way to avoid this power-up remover because of how low the roof is. Well, it is possible to avoid it, but it's not useful because you have to die in the process, which would just remove them anyway. But the bounce pads do help, and we can reach the next bomb without jumping, where we take a zipline for a while, then do another jump onto some bounce pads. The final running section has a total of 5 ledges that we have no way of getting around, aside from another brand new way of getting height. EXPLOSIONS! By perfectly timing our position with the exploding bombs, we're able to launch ourselves over every obstacle that gets in our way, letting us finish the level in only 6 jumps. Waste disposal starts immediately with a drop down into some rubbish that we kinda get stuck in and need to jump out of. But if we just wait for a tall enough stack before dropping down, we can just change layer onto the bounce pads instead. I'm surprised it's taken this long to happen, but here's another new way for us to gain height without jumping, which is boosting off of fire. It isn't much, but it lets us bounce over this gap if we time it perfectly. Then for the next gap we can actually just run off the edge to make it. The luck stops when we need to jump to grab this sponge though. But there is a pretty major skip here, so this level might actually be pretty easy. Right after this crushing section is another massive staircase, and even more gaps to jump over afterwards. So to skip all of it, we can just wait before the moving frame to send another player ahead, which, after fire boosting a couple of times, does take two jumps to get through. But once we activate the checkpoint over there, it unloads all of the level to the left of us, letting us fall off and out of bounds. But first, we're actually going to be taking another player with us to do the next part of the skip. After running to the right for a while, we reach this vertical tunnel that we typically wouldn't be able to get into, but by standing both of our players in between one of the beams in a different layer and then having them grab each other, we can force the main player to do a layer change onto nothing, putting them inside of the tunnel to fall down. With this, we can keep running through the tunnel to do a drop down at the perfect time to fall back in bounds, and do one final jump towards the scoreboard, skipping most of the level. But I think we can actually do a bit better. Back before we fall out of bounds, let's actually take three players instead. Once we get two players into the tunnel like we did earlier, instead of dropping down, we will force another layer change onto the main player that puts them in the air and underneath the floor of this room. 
Now if they just keep on grabbing the other player through the floor, we can let go near the edge and end up landing much further than we did before, clearing the level in only 4 jumps. And now for the final level of this world, which is pretty short, and we're also given the grappling hook, so it's looking pretty good. Until we realise that there aren't that many things to grapple off of. Meaning at this part, we need to get to the top platform so that we can run down the rest like stairs, which skips the fire pits on the bottom level. We can lower the two bridges easily, but right after there are more fire pits, that this time we can't avoid. So we'll jump over the three of them. The second half of the level removes our grappling hook. But I mean, it hasn't really been that useful so who cares. For the next set of pits we're given a bounce pad to reach the top of here, so we can just go over them. But we're not so lucky with the next two gaps, even the fire is too deep to make it possible to fire boost. That's not true for the next few though, the fire is close enough to boost off to keep going. Uh, except for this one. But now we can finish the level in only 6 jumps. Something just to note, is that there is a glitch on an earlier version of this game, which lets us skip half of this level, and 3 of the jumps in it, by using a create mode tutorial. I'm not going to be considering it for this video though, for a few reasons. But mostly just because, this video is for the latest version of the game. But just know, if you do want to consider that, then the final total will be 3 less jumps than what I get at the end. On to Avalonia! This world starts with another sticker switch we can't use. So after we get out of the transporter using a drop down, we can head over to the last new power up, the Controllinator. Except we just can't reach the sponge that spawns it. If we take off the decoration we can see just how close we are, but regardless we need to use a jump to reach it. The way we'll be counting jumps with this power up, is that if the word jump appears in the control prompts, then it will count. Which is certainly the case for this rabbit. Even Avalon mentions it. But the good thing is, by moving back and forth we can make progress without jumping, until we reach these obstacles. Thankfully there's like, a bunch of different ways to skip a lot of this level, which will be useful because that bubble wrap definitely wouldn't have been the only issue. So, we can remove that jump from before, since when we go back, we're not going to be spawning the rabbit. We'll instead go ahead without it, and take one of the pieces of bubble wrap with us to do a skip that's all the way on the left. Except, it gets stuck when we reach the sloped glass. We can push it pretty far if we use a jump at the right time, but it's not enough. So we'll spawn another player, and use a drop down to have them just on the edge. Now when we jump to push it up, the extra player can grab it and pull it over. After this we can push it up this slope, and use two more consecutive jumps to get on top of the transporter, letting us walk off and get out of bounds. Once we make it back in at the right spot, we can spawn the very last vehicle of the level with the jump, and continue as intended. Like the rabbit, the hamster has a jump as well, but what it also has is a boost ability, which lets us fly into the air without jumping at all. Using this, we can make it all the way to the end of the hamster's path, except just before we finish, there's one more thing to set up. Before the scoreboard there's some stairs that we want to avoid, so just before we get into the range to dismount the hamster, we'll launch into the air and start holding R1. Doing this, the hamster will land next to the scoreboard, and since its wheel is still spinning, we'll be dragged to the top of the stairs, finishing in 6 jumps. Ok, so the final 4 levels of this world all play exactly the same as each other, so I'm not going to go through them individually. Throughout the entirety of all of them, we're forced to pilot some sort of controllinator, such as a camel or a bee, which all don't have any jumping ability, which pretty much lets you go through them completely as intended, without needing to jump at all. And no, the jumps that these sackbots do to grab the bees don't count. So after we sit through Got the Hump, the Sackbot Redemption, flying in the face of danger, and defeating the boss in huge peril for huge spaceship, we can move straight onto Eve's Asylum without any additional jumps. <sighs> you know what, I spoke too soon, because the first level of the next world is literally just another controllinator auto scroller with no jumping ability. Except this time it's a caterpillar, so that's exciting I guess. But yeah, this one doesn't take any jumps again. We're back with another pretty interesting level here though, with fireflies when you're having fun, which does start with two jumps that we can't avoid. It seems almost possible to run off this seesaw to avoid one, but I don't think it's doable. Then after, there's another four jumps to do to get up these stairs. And then we have two pits of gas that we also can't get across, putting us at eight jumps. For the next gas though, we get to do some more fire boosting to avoid the jump. Then for the next gap, if we perfectly time hitting the bounce pad, 
we can get another fire boost to actually completely skip a platform. The next bounce pads can be run onto, but then we have to use another jump afterwards, where following the bounce pads is another pit that we need to jump over. To make it onto this seesaw we use a jump, but we're a bit luckier than before when getting off of it, since we can use a fire boost to make it across. After another bounce pad we have the last pit for the dark section, where it's just barely possible to make it across by fire boosting off the firefly. Seriously, you die like 95% of the time when trying to do this because of how unforgiving LBP2's fire is. After a few more bounces we finally get given a grappling hook, which we can use to get past this section and then the next one, starting the second part of this level with 11 jumps. A lot of the start here is just filled with bounce pads which don't really present much of a challenge, aside from needing to jump to reach this plant since the gap is just too big. And then, we get the grappling hook back. We move through the level pretty much as intended until here, where we grapple someone to avoid the drop down. After this there's a small bounce pad section, followed by the scoreboard, finishing this one with 12 jumps. The creator finally makes an epic return, except instead of cakes, we're shooting water, since I don't think the former could put out all this fire. But who knows, maybe it could. This does make for some interesting challenges though, since we're sort of able to choose if we want to fire boost off something or not. For example, once we get to this second platform after running onto it, we can actually just extinguish half of it so that we can fire boost off the other half to clear the gap. We're not so lucky in the next section though. We use a jump to get off this first water tongue thing, and then another two to get onto the next ones, and one more to get off the last. Thankfully the middle one is high enough for us to just change layer. But then we have another drop down, but more fire, which means more jumps that we can skip. For this part, we just put out everything except for the blocks that precede another step up, letting us fire boost all the way up the stairs. We have another jump to meet the queen, and then to avoid the staircase on the left, we can use another jump to get on top of her, and then one more to get off. Yet another jump is used to get off of the water tongue. Then for the next section, we extinguish this block midair after we use a drop down so that we can fire boost over to it, since these gaps are too big to do from the left edge of the fire, meaning we have to use a jump to reach the next platform, and then also the next one. It would be cool to use these sackbots to fire boost instead, but they just kill you instantly. Now there's a tiny break here as we fall downwards a bit, until we reach another staircase. But like a lot of other stairs, we can clear it in two jumps instead of three, by setting up a left corner jump before the platforms come out. This moving platform is pretty easy to get across because of the fire again, for us to then make our way over to the fireball section. After falling once, we use a drop down to keep going, and then another to get to the bottom floor while behind the ball of fire. To get across the next gap, we can slowly push it across, then as it falls into the pit, we can just barely fire boost to make it. This staircase we can't really do much about, because we can't grab anything, and there's only one layer here, so we'll just take the three jumps. The rotating platforms can take us the rest of the way though, and we can just keep fire boosting to get across, whatever these things are, and then little Zim's platform is just barely out of reach, forcing us to jump. But from here, we can run off the platform at the right time to get to the next one, then fire boost the rest of the way because of how good it is at conserving speed, finishing the level in... 20 jumps? Wow, that's been the worst for a while now actually. The next level does give us the same power up, but it's a lot shorter so hopefully it won't be as bad. It really doesn't start off well though, as right at the beginning there are two jumps that we can't avoid due to the lack of fire in this section. We can walk across the bridge once it comes out though, and the bouncing platforms can all be reached without jumping. Until we get to the orange one though where we need to use a jump, and then another for the next orange one too. This tiny ledge in the next area also forces us to do another jump, but the next bridge lets us get by just by walking. Alright, bounce pads, that's a good sign. There's quite a large run here of easy movement with bounce pads, and then another bridge, followed by more bounce pads, another bridge, and then more bounce pads, all of which are quite simple to get around. We then get led into the boss fight for the level, which in itself doesn't have any jumps in it, but getting out of the arena afterwards requires one, and then we have to use another four to get over these stairs. I have gotten pretty close at skipping one though, but anyway, now we can finish the level with 10 jumps. So the final level of this world is another controlinator oriented boss fight, which again doesn't give us any option to jump at all. So once we make it into the boss room and defeat it, we can finish the level without jumping and move on to the final world of the game. 
Once we fall down at the start of the first level, there's like the biggest staircase that we've come across so far. So we're just going to restart and find another way around. If we have another player despawn as they're coming out of the entrance, it'll remove the collision of the wall on the right side of the room, letting us get out of bounds with only one jump. You don't really need to know why this happens, it just kind of does. Eventually we reach this hole in the floor, which falling through puts us into the claw machine near the level link, starting part 2 with only one jump. With the gravity blocks we can use a jump to get onto the first ones, then run off as they're rising to skip another two jumps. It's really close, but we can do a similar thing for the next block to get around the electricity, where we then run off, and then use a jump here since the roof is in our way. We can then make it to the cutscene trigger pretty easily, where the gravity gets turned down, making our jumps go much higher. We can use one to get over the electricity, and then another for this gap. The spinning wheel isn't a problem, it's just the lever right afterwards which we can't really reach by trying to get a boost from the wheel. But, because I watched the latest ESA event where LBP2 was ran by speedrunners Crosso, Frit, Fire Thief, and RBG Jellyfish back in July, I learned that you can actually get way more speed by linking a few players together, landing us on the platform above the lever due to cool effects of physics, being that the outer player travels faster because they need to cover a larger distance in the same amount of time. Anyway, once we're here we need to use another three jumps to get through this section, and then another to get over the electricity afterwards. We get past the next spinning wheel and have to do another three jumps while pressing the buttons. Then in the next section, we can get away with only two more jumps if we do them strategically. Yet another jump comes from reaching the last spinning wheel, and then another two in this section, which would have been three if we did it normally. But finally, we now get to use a controllinator, which does give us the ability to fly into the air, but since the controls describe this section as a flip, we don't have to count it, letting us breeze through this entire section until reaching one last drop down to the scoreboard, finishing in 18 total jumps. The start of Full Metal Rabbit nicely gives us some Grabinators, but most of the first route is pretty flat anyway, so we don't really need to use multiple players to make it, since we can just use Bounce Pads and Fire Beasts when we need to. It's not until reaching these platforms where we need multiple players. We throw two people over initially to clear the path, killing the enemies and throwing a bomb. Then we death abuse to make it to the checkpoint now that nothing's in the way. We can bounce up as normal for the next part, but right after is this sponge that's too high to reach, so we'll get another player to lift us up and kill the enemies. Now we can make it down the rest of the way, and start the second part without any jumps. The entirety of this section is completed using the rabbit controlinator from earlier, except this time there's no skip for it. So after we use a jump to spawn one, we need to actually ride it, and try not to use its jumping ability. We can slam through this part without jumping, and then waddle over to the wall to do a jump, and then do another two to make it to the next slamming part. But then we need to do another jump to get over this whole gap. It seems like we would probably need to do some jumping to avoid this enemy's lasers, but just by standing still, we can sit below them whenever they go off, getting us through here without jumping. But here, there's another two jumps to reach the checkpoint where, again, the lasers just barely miss us. Where we then have another three jumps to reach the next checkpoint, while avoiding all of the enemies. The next enemy can't be avoided though, since it's blocking the path. But instead of using an entire additional jump just to get up and kill it, after we use two jumps to get onto the ledge, we can do another jump, kill the enemy, and land on the next platform all in one go. The exact same thing is done on the next enemy, getting us out of the room with another three jumps, leading to the last section, which is this staircase. The best I've been able to complete it with being, using one jump to get to the checkpoint, and then using another four to climb up the enemies and slam on the button, to complete the level with a total of 21 jumps. A new worst. But it's not all bad, since we get a grapple hook at the start of the next level. We can use it to get pretty far without jumping, which is just after these platforms where a drop down is needed to keep going. After this we keep using bounce pads for a while to make it up to this enemy, where another jump is needed to change layer on this ledge where more bounce pads end up helping us to keep going. The next few enemies are easy to handle with our power up until we get to the flamethrower, where we need to jump to reach these bounce pads. I tried fire boosting off of its projectile, but it's just too strong, leading us to finish the first part with three jumps so far. The first section here is entirely made up of swinging around these sponges and defeating enemies, so there's no reason to jump. Afterwards, this enemy can be killed easily, and then we finally reach another challenge as these platforms are destroyed around us. We need to use two jumps to get to the checkpoint, since fire boosting is so not possible with the falling speed that we get. Down here though, it's very much possible, getting us to the right and onto the robot without issue. To 
To get across this gap, we have to time hitting the bounce pad when it moves a certain way, where we then do a similar trick to make it onto the shoulders of the thing. It's impossible to get over the plasma without jumping, and same for getting onto this ledge. But from here we can kill the boss as normal. But of course it's not over yet. We have to do one more jump down to finally walk up to the scoreboard with a total of 8. Flight of the Bumblebees follows exactly the same style as various other levels that we've seen before, where we get placed into a flying controllinator without any option to jump, auto scrolling our way through the level until reaching the scoreboard. I'm sure I don't need to explain it any further, so let's just take our zero jumps and head into the final level of the game to defeat the Negativitron. The start of this one also puts us directly into a controllinator, except this time it's just another hamster, which, as we know, is able to fly around and do pretty much everything that we need it to do without jumping, so we can completely finish the first phase of the boss fight without any problems. Then the second phase just keeps it going by now giving us a grappling hook, so um, yeah this part is super simple as well since we're just swinging around until we hit the boss's weak spot. It's when we land after this part where it gets slightly interesting, where the ledge is just barely out of reach to get to without dropping down, until we realise that for some reason, the floors are closer together on the right side of the arena, so we can just change layer and get into the final phase of the fight that way. Now, this part is a little difficult, but we do have the Grabinator, so that's something at least. To avoid these attacks, you would typically just jump to not die, but since that's not an option for us, we can instead just time our movement to avoid everything. Well, almost everything. Towards the end, the entire floor gets turned to plasma, which we can't really do anything about, forcing us to die at least twice. Then when the dude finally comes down, we can't even reach him with the cake without using a jump as well. So let's just go back a few moments, and let's spawn a second player as the boss is about to come down, then build a little tower so that we can reach the bubble. Also, so that we don't have to go through all of that again, and more importantly so that we don't run out of lives, we can spawn a third player at the right time, hit the brain with the cake, and then watch as the extra player takes the rest of the hits out of the boss as they try to enter the arena. With this last little trick, we can now take out the very last hit for the boss, and complete the entire level without jumping. Letting us now finally know that it takes 186 jumps to complete Little Big Planet 2. At most anyway. I'm sure various improvements will be found to make that number lower. But let's just take a look at what we've already accomplished. So overall, we were able to complete a total of 31 different levels in only 186 jumps, which averages out to be 6 jumps per level with 9 of those levels being completed completely jumpless. Although, in 7 of those, we were just in a controllinator the entire time. Of those 186 jumps, 141 came from regular jumping, 25 from drop downs, and 20 from using controllinators, which actually all came from one level, Full Metal Rabbit, which was also the worst level overall at 21 jumps, with Patience Are a Virtue being ahead of that by only a single jump. The worst world ended up being the Cosmos with 47 jumps, then Eve's Asylum being close behind at 42. I'm quite pleased with the results of this challenge. Like always, I wasn't really expecting it to be this deep, so I'm glad that I tried it out and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. Thanks for all the support, and thanks for watching.